In this video, we will look at what are the various parameters that are involved in setting up archive destinations and archiving. Also, we will look at how to find out whether a database is in archive log mode or no archive log mode. First, let's look at the list of parameters. The first one to see would be log archive format. What is the meaning of this parameter? When a log file is getting archived, what will be the naming format of that file? There are a bunch of options as to how you can specify. For example, number one, there is a percentage %s which talks about the sequence number. Remember, every time a redo log group is switched into, the sequence number increments. We have percentage %s in small letter which will just give the sequence number or percentage %s in capital which will have a zero filled sequence number. Number two, we have percentage %t. T is thread number which is applicable in an RAC environment wherein each instance is considering different threads. So percentage %t small letter signifies just the thread number or percentage %t in capital will have a zero filled thread number. Further, we also have percentage %a which stands for activation ID. This is basically in a data guard environment where it comes in applicable. Then we have percentage %d, which is database ID, the ID for the database, which is uniquely generated whenever you create a database. And lastly, we have percentage %r. r will bring in the reset logs ID. What is reset logs? We need to talk about it when we do recovery. Whenever you open a database with reset logs, which can happen if you do a point in time recovery or an incomplete recovery, or when you duplicate a database, then the reset logs could be identified as from then on, the read logs sequence numbers would again get started from zero. So if a database gets reset logged, then that would also be part of your log archive format. So these are the various options available when you specify log archive format and you specified with all these options and remember three of them are mandatory the sequence number thread number and reset log are three mandatory components in a log archive format but you can add other options as you may find it necessary that's about log archive format next comes destinations where do you want to send these archive log files? Number one, we could have local destinations or remote destinations. If you want to use only local, which is the case if it is just a standalone database, then you could use the parameter log archive dest or log archive duplex dest. The idea behind these two parameters is just to specify a path where on the server where the database is running, where you want to archive the log files and a duplex destination where you want to archive it to two different destinations. And there is also the choice of specifying whether a destination is mandatory or optional. By default, log archive dest is mandatory, log archive duplex dest is optional. Now there is also the choice of specifying log archive min succeed dest. Now what is the meaning of this? How many minimum destinations should have succeeded? So if you have log archive test and log archive duplex test specified and you specify min succeed test to be two, then both become mandatory. What is the impact of that? When a group is switched into and if it has not yet been archived to both the destinations, then you will not be able to switch over into it again. You can't write any new lead log entries into that. Your database will basically halt at that point. The other option you can use is log archive dest underscore n where n could range from 1 to 31. What is this? If you want to use both local archiving and remote archiving, typically remote archiving comes into the play when you have standby databases in a data guard environment, destination 1 to 10 can be used both for local or remote, whereas destinations 11 to 31 can be used only for remote. How do you specify whether it is a local destination or a remote destination? When you specify log archive test underscore one, then you have the choice of specifying location. 
And if you use location, you give the path where you want it to be archived or you have service equal to and you give a TNS alias which points to a remote database. When we talk about log archive format, this format is ignored under two special conditions. Number one, if you use the local destination to be the FRA destination, then it is Oracle managed files, it creates files in its own manner. Number two, if the local destination is an ASM disk group root folder, for example, you have a disk group named FRA and you give location equal to or log archive test equal to and you just give the FRA disk group plus followed by the disk group name, then Oracle is going to manage the file naming convention. But on the other hand, if you specify disk group name followed by a path, which is a directory within the disk group, then it will follow your format specification. Along with log archive dest 1 to 31, you also have a status for these, which can be specified as log archive dest state underscore 1. When you specify that, you are basically telling, is it an enabled destination or a disabled destination or a deferred destination or an alternate destination? If it is enabled, then Oracle is trying to archive there. If it is disabled, then whenever log switches occur, the disabled destinations will not be archived into. You can also set that to be deferred, meaning right now don't do. It is enabled, but right now I want it to be disabled. But you are not setting it to disabled, you are setting it to defer. Now remember, when a destination is disabled or deferred, if multiple log switches have occurred and archivals have happened, when you enable them back, it will not archive automatically. You need to take care of manually copying the archive log files that have already been generated into these destinations when you enable them. You also have an option of specifying alternate destination. What is the idea behind alternate? I might say log archive dest 3 is a particular destination and I might say alternate for that is destination 4. The impact is if destination 3 is unavailable, then it will apply it to destination 4. Otherwise, by default, it is not going to archive to destination 4. Again, with log archive dest underscore 1, you could use min succeed dest to be a option wherein if you have specified 10 destinations in your uh, parameters and you specify min succeed dest to be 5, then remember, at least 5 destinations would have to be archived into before a particular group can be overwritten. When I am going to have multiple destinations, it will be good to have multiple processes which can send it across. The number of processes that will be started to do archiving is defined by the parameter log archive max processes, which defaults to four, but you can dynamically reset to any number. So a good practice would be to have as many log archive process equivalent to the number of destinations that you have specified. Then we have the parameter log archive trace. In case any destination is having a problem, you can enable your background process, which is the archiver process, to write a trace file. By default, it is zero, which means it's not going to write a trace, but you have various options like one, two, four, eight, etc., through which you can enable it to trace with certain level of details. The larger the value, you get more trace information when you want to troubleshoot. Log archive dest 11 to 31 can be used only for remote. Keep that in mind. You can't use them for local destinations. And lastly, archive log list is a command through which you can find out the current configuration of your database archive mode, what is the current sequence number, what is the last archive sequence number, and various details which you will see in the demo. That's about the list of parameters that you use to configure archival for a database. Actually, there are many more options with respect to log archive dest underscore n, which are specifically applicable when you use data guard and specify service to ship. Details about that I will disclose in the videos under data guard.